I'm just carving these uh, this decorative strip. bottom of the first to do that and then I'll take my little V gouge Carefully go around it here. Not really deep, just basically cutting the surface. Just make sure it's even. continuing on around like it did that there and then what we're going to do there's my pencil now here let me finish this this area right here What you want to do first is take your knife and cut that upper area really deep. Telephone. All right, a grand granddaughter called us on the phone, so we've been talking to her. And while we've been talking, I've been going around carving fringe on this lady. By making that cut up there, deep cut right around here like this, you don't have to go back and forth and chip that stuff out. It's just a matter of making it like that. goes pretty quick.
just the process, just going around the figure. So I'll finish this later, you see what I'm doing. And then we'll come back, we're going to burn all these, so that'll make it look even better, okay? Not much left to do, but I know you don't want to sit there and constantly watch me do that. But anyway, also what we're going to do, after we do that, we're going to go back and we're going to take a little notch out of each one. So when we set it down, see how much better that looks than being flat on the this area over here. It'll look better that way. Okay? So let Judy sit down again if she wants. No, nope. doesn't want to sit down. So we'll continue on this now. What we need to do is We want our ear to not line up with the bottom of the jaw. Like that, see? that little shave right there most of this will probably be hidden by the earring when I put that on there but we'll go ahead and carve it anyway That's looking pretty good. Let's kind of round her chin out here. That's looking pretty good.
shadows play, learn to use shadows because they play so such a big part when you're carving. If you hold it up here in the, in the bright light, see how the shadows get to where you really can't see them that well. So you want to move it down to where you, even if you have to see the difference when you bring it up, you just see it completely different. Get used to doing that and it's going to help you. So okay, let's talk about female anatomy just a second. I'm going to get get my reference book over here. Okay, you, here's a great little book. Unfortunately, I don't think they give it away anymore like they used to. But if you go to pcfstudios.com, I think you can find just about everything that's in this book, which is, you know, in print it off, and it's a good reference material. Anyway, these two pictures show you the difference between a female and a male. So what are the most uh, striking things that are different? It's really clear to see that the female has a real narrow chin where the male chin is strong and square. Hers is softened and more or less comes to a point down here. And it's kind of a smooth up here where down here again it's strong. But this is the most important thing is the shape down here. Now not all women are exactly like that but that's a generalized shape if you remember that. Looking through my reference book here put this thing over here up to where there's no reflection. I keep these, you know, I subscribe to a number of uh, magazines, American, I think, Western Art Collector and is one of the main ones. And uh, I like to see how different artists portray their figures. And just by looking at them, now this one is pretty, you can recognize immediately that that's a Native American. Now here, that doesn't look at all like a Native American to me. She might be a Native American by the way they can count Americans. Because around here where we are, we live on a, a Cherokee Indian allotment that's what our place was in the past. It was in that area where the Cherokees were moved. So you see a lot of people, Indians, who are, you know, considered Native Americans, that they've intermarried with white people or other races so many times that the features of a Native American are almost completely lost. That's what, to me, these look like. Let me go through here some more. I'm going to get myself in trouble here. Now, by the hairstyle here and her face, you can recognize that that's a, either a Navajo or a Hopi. That certainly does not look like a Native American to me. Now, this is a clay of one of... Uh, David Lemon's pieces before it was cast into bronze. You can clearly see here the pointed chin, the strong cheekbones, and she's she's a Native American just by looking at her. There's some, some older people. There's another one of David's pieces. There's sweet grass. We have a we have this bronze sitting up at my house. Beautiful piece, just beautiful. I'm gonna bring it down here and show you. But uh, here she is again. That was the first bronze I bought. Yep, telephone again, boy. We're talking to this afternoon. Okay, back again. It was our granddaughter again. Okie doke. 
Here's another uh, Native American. Actually, there's two of them here. This one's different than this one up here. This is a clay, the clay done by David Lemon before it was cast into bronze. And you can see the, the pointed sides going into a fairly, or the sides going into a fairly pointed chin, okay? And if you look, look at what we've got here, you can see that in this piece, what little we have roughed out yet. So we're heading in the same direction as uh, Dave did here, okay? There's the hair going around the ear, showing the corner of the ear. There's our corner of the ear. That's how much these things like this can help you. You can see how others, you don't have to copy them, but you can see how they do things. And if you watch, if you watch some of David's videos, watch the Sweetgrass video. I think almost the whole video is on there now. You can actually buy a copy of that video, which will really show you how a figure is constructed. And you can learn so much by the way these guys, although he's working in a completely different kind of medium, you can see and learn the way they do it. How, how you can implement it in your pieces and how it can help you. I mean, he starts from us beneath this he these heads. Beneath this heads is a skull that he, he did or he bought because it now uses uh, commercially available uh, skeletons to build these pieces on. But before he did that, he actually constructed a skull and he applied clay to that skull until he reached the final point on there. It's, a, it's just amazing to me to watch how these sculptors do these things. So anyway, let's put this away. We'll keep this page open so we can look back, back at it, okay? I hope you're not getting bored by me telling you the way I look at things. But uh, to me, that's the way I learned to do the things I did. So on the nose, if, you, if we remember looking at the, that clay over there, the nose is also different on a female and a male. The females is much more feminine, <laughs> I guess you could say. You don't want some big blocky nose on there. See your eye come out. above that line we're going to just sort of indicate the brow. See there? Now let's go back to her nose here a minute. I 
Don't immediately go for the eyes. Carvers do that, and boy, they just immediately get themselves into trouble. By concentrating on one area without bringing the other areas along with it. Okay, we've got the point of her nose. Now let's just look at that picture. Let me take it out of the book here. Put it over where I can see it. You can see that the nostril side on the side goes up a little from the the ball that's on the end of her nose. So that's what I'm going to do right now is bring it up just a bit. Like that. Like that. Someone asked me how, how Judy keeps my glove clean. Well, she doesn't. This is a fairly new glove here. My other one got so bad I had to... <laughs> disgusting looking, I tossed it. But I'll show you something. Even that old glove still comes in handy because beneath my thumb guard here is a finger off of that, well, off of a carving glove. I save those fingers and I wrap that sticky, uh, sticky back gauze tape around that. And that just gives me double, well, more than actually, more than double protection. And uh, being as they're elasticized, they really hold on to your thumb. Because if you don't do that, uh, these things get sweaty inside after you carve a long time and they get floppy and they're spinning all over the place and they just don't feel very safe. So I'm going to take a break here and uh, polish up my blade again because uh, it's starting to drag. Okay, I went over and polished my blade so now it works a lot better. Let go. All right, let me soften up this line a little here. Okay. Let me Let me get those even. That's about right. Now if you look at her, she's got a little ball almost on the 
tip of her nose. If you feel your nose, reach up and feel your nose. You got one too. So we're just going to lightly indicate that right here. I'm going to take off just a little more in here. Now for her nostril, all I do is right in here, I'll come in, just sort of a stab cut right there. And I take out a little chip. See, that creates a shadow line there. That's really all you have to do. Don't go drilling holes in your piece for a nostril. It's just not necessary. There. And we can soften that corner right there. Same here. Looks good. All right. Now, if you notice on her face, so you've got a, it's not a really a crease. I think, where's that little book go? Where'd that book go? There it is. Again, this book will show you. See the muscles around the mouth here? That's what you see here. See, it shows up here. And it shows up here a little bit, too. Well, let's see what happens here.
I just want to take out the, the little chip here to which is the corner of her mouth. Sort of a slant, just right across there to join the two sides. Mm -hmm. Soften that up right away here. And right beneath her chin, the chin, right beneath her lip, you'll see it's kind of deep right here. A little divot. So let's just put that in there. That's going to help it a lot. There. that I think we're going to stop with this video so again turning her head there she show whoop she got a little got a little wart up there and don't want that wart because that's that's all you'll see you see these people real people they have a prominent wart or a prominent mole or, you know, a raised mole or something on their face. And once you see that, that's all you see. You're just constantly watching that. Where are we going to remove ours? There we go. One more thing before we quit, which changes, changes the look of the face a lot, is right here... Let's see if I can see it. Right here, on each side, there's kind of a little divot caused by the skull underneath. where these muscles come together. There, got this strong muscle here and this other muscle comes down to it. And that causes a little indentation there. So it's right, right here.
pretty strong. things right there okay so that's going to be it she doesn't she's not smiling she's not frying frowning she's just she's just looking and that's what we want okay so until next time I'll talk to you later <laughs>